Courtney Swallow. I'm the leader for Group 4 for the 2D heat conduction experiment. For this experiment, um, it'll be exhibiting heat transfer via 2D conduction in a flat plate exposed to the following boundary conditions, constant heat flux, isothermal, and adiabatic. And the objectives are to experimentally approximate the required time for the plate to reach thermal equilibrium, to experimentally and numerically find the steady state temperature field throughout the plate, and this is done using the alternating direction implicit method, and then finally to compare the measured versus theoretical time and the resulting temperature field. So the setup um, is shown in this picture. The plate being used is aluminum 6420 with a thermal conductivity of 200 watts per meter Kelvin. And um, the two electro-resistive heaters uh, are shown in the picture. The two ice bath reservoirs and their location and then um, also, the top surface of the plate has a grid of ports, and these port temperatures are measured with a handheld thermocouple. For the procedure, uh, we'll first record the initial plate temperature with the thermocouple, and then we will clamp the drain hoses so you prevent any um, water from leaving in the ice bath. And We'll prepare the ice baths uh, with ice and water and making sure to avoid any water splashing on the surface of the plate. And then we can also add uh, ice if needed throughout the experiment. And then we'll modify the rheostat to supply a total of 200 watts to the heaters and immediately place a thermocouple in the port near the center and record the time it takes to reach equilibrium. And after equilibrium is reached, we will record the temperature at each location over the plate surface and finally turn off the heaters and empty the ice baths. For the calculations, uh, it's under the assumption that surface one is instantaneously at temperature TW1, surface two is instantaneously heated by a uniform flux uh, Q2 and the edges along surfaces three and four are insulated. And then this results in a heat transfer process that's approximated to 2D. The equation is here where alpha is the thermal diffusivity. And then it's um, essentially an initial boundary value problem with the initial conditions seen here and the three boundary conditions depending where you are. And using the ADI method, we'll integrate equation one under these um, conditions. So first, we have to uh, discretize the spatial domain for the plate, where LX and LY are the dimensions of the rectangular cross section, and NX and NY are the number of grid points in the X and Y direction. And then um, further approximations are used in equations five and six to simplify the original um, equation. And then the time derivative is discretized in two steps. First, it'll break down to equation seven, where delta t is a small time step. I think it said like approximately 10 seconds. And uh, further simplify, we set delta x equal to delta y which arrives at equation eight, where lambda is equal to the thermal diffusivity times the time step divided by delta x squared. And then it's um, very important that at each location you use the correct boundary conditions. So if we were at grid point one, one, you essentially take the average of uh, all the four nodes surrounding it and for the ghost cells, since they're out of like the calculating uh, domain, they are just based on the condition being uh, applied at its surface. And then finally, using the MATLAB code, you can um, 
obtain the final results that were previously stated in the objectives. So, any questions? Again, yeah, same question. Physically, where do you see something like this happening? Uh, what I can think of is like in buildings of like the heat conduction, like through. Because, I mean, walls are made of different things, or like if one has a window, it's exposed to direct sunlight and from like a roof through a ceiling too, because then there's like insulation at the top. And, yeah. 